right, with this video, I'd like to go ahead and just introduce you to the discipline of material science and engineering. So we'll just start off with the definition. The goal of material science and engineering is to enable the scientist and engineer to design, select, and use materials for specific applications and to develop new materials for future applications. All right, a good overview of some materials research that's going on and just to give you a flavor of the kinds of things that materials science uh, departments do. I just point you to this Nova site. They've got a great series called Making Stuff and it goes through a lot of interesting uh, projects. So I'll just leave that to you. I've sent you out a poll and a discussion uh, assignment on this particular question of whether you enjoy the plastic bottle, the glass bottle, or the aluminum can for your favorite beverage, and why you chose what you did. And we will take a look at that in another short video uh, once I get your results, and we'll talk a little bit about the idea of properties and performance and uh, take a look at some of the responses that, uh, that you all make. All right, in material science and engineering, we'd like to talk about this uh, materials uh, tetrahedron. And it kind of shows the uh, core of what we teach and how we approach engineering. So the main idea is that material science and engineers are interested not only in the properties or performance of a material, but we're very interested in how the structure of a material can affect the properties and in ways by which we can process a material in order to affect the structure. And so when we know these linkages, then we're able to tailor properties and to tailor a material for a given performance by undergoing a processing method that alters the structure, that gives us the properties that we want combination of properties that results in a performance. We'll also talk about the um, characterization methods. We will use those in order to measure, for example, structure or to measure properties. So maybe the elastic modulus, for example, in the tension test. We like to think of things in terms of this tetrahedron. And we will spend uh, a lot of time in this class. Up front, we'll be talking about structure. And then we'll be talking a lot about properties and their measurements or characterization, especially as we move into chapter uh, six and we get into mechanical behavior. And then in the later chapters, we will touch more on the processing methods. Okay, just as one uh, very quick example of optical properties, this is a uh, this is a aluminum, sorry, alumina. Right, aluminum oxide, and we have it in several forms. We have this here as a single crystal. Uh, we have it in a polycrystal. Oops, polycrystal. And we have one that is both polycrystalline and porous. And we'll learn about what a single crystal is and a polycrystal as we move on through the course. But these are different um, microstructures in the material and the resultant is in the property of optical. You have either transparent, translucent, or opaque. Okay. And so the most expensive one is the first one, single crystal, but that doesn't mean that the other two are um, defective materials that are not useful. In fact, they're very useful for certain applications. So the more porosity we have in something, we lower the density. We also improve the thermal insulation capabilities, for example. So when we say structure of a material, we could mean many different levels. Uh, the very basic level, which is what we'll touch on first, is the atomic structure. By atomic structure, what we're interested in is the bonding between atoms. And so you'll read about that in chapter two. And then we move up from there and we start looking at the arrangement of the atoms into a crystal. And this is the atomic arrangement level. We'll do that chapter three. 
And then microstructure, we'll talk a lot about through most of the chapters in the text. There we're talking about polycrystalline samples, and how the grains are arranged, or we'll see later in chapter nine, we'll talk about different phases or compositions throughout a material. The macrostructure um, we'll leave out really of this course. Uh, mostly we may touch on this idea of sharp corners, um, but we won't do a whole lot with the macrostructure. So what do we mean by a material property? And so a material property needs to be independent of the size and shape of the material. So the idea is that we want it to depend on the material itself, not on its geometry. So for example, um, if we were simply apply a stimulus to a material, so for example, maybe a force or stress, and we will see the material responds by deforming right, or strain. The property that relates the two experimentally will be the stiffness and in terms of the stress strain, we're talking about the elastic modulus or Young's modulus, um, if you've heard of that. Especially if you're from mechanical engineering, you've probably heard of this. We could talk about maybe putting a temperature change on a sample, right? Put the temperature difference, say, on a bridge, and you will notice that the expansion joints in the bridge will either uh, close or open, depending upon whether it's cold or hot. It's really, the, I should have said it the other way, they close when it's hot, they open when it's cold. But that temperature change results in also a deformation of the sample, a change in length, um, for example, which is a strain. And the thermal expansion coefficient relates the two. 